Now, a book on Pluto, and I've been also uh, looking through the old issue of Mountain Astrologer magazine, the one that they have about Pluto. And this came out um, last year. But in rereading it, I found this article in here that really struck me. It was about uh, a temple for Pluto, they say. And what can you do if you have a Pluto angular and affecting your moon? And um, I happen to have that in my chart, so of course it's a great interest to me. One of the things this little article said that really struck me is it said, uh, it would give us our own ideas of nurturing the moon and the Pluto and the Pluto will confront us psychologically with an obsessive belief in the need to repeatedly do something destructive until it kills us or until we change. And they go on to quote the astrologer Carolyn Casey is saying the only way to combat a moon Pluto scenario is to become a stealth agent for change. And that's what I've been doing in my own life. I've been using elixirs and ceremonies and rituals and yoga and everything I can get my hands on in order to transform that moon Pluto of mine. But here's what's interesting. I was looking through the National Enquirer like that very day and I read this article about poor Sandra D. And if you don't know who she is, she was a Gidget, the first Gidget. And I'm looking at the article, it said that Sandra D uh, came into the hospital absolutely sure she had cancer, crying and screaming. And I'd like to show you the article in her chart here for a minute because the first thing that came to mind is, ooh, she must have a moon Pluto. She said that um, she, even though she's been suffering from anorexia, uh, a kidney problem, and um, anemia, many health issues she has, uh, she came running into the hospital. She's drinking herself to death anyway, okay? She came running into the hospital thinking that she was on the verge of cancer and they said, no, you're not even there yet. But <laughs> I wanted to show you the chart of Sandra D for a minute. <clears throat> now, Sandra D is a Taurus with a Mercury in Taurus and an Aries rising. I have her exact birth time, it's correct. But the first thing that I saw when I looked, of course, is look at this. She does have that moon, Pluto, and it sits with Chiron. This shows the moon, Pluto, the nurturing problem here. How do I correctly nurture myself? And that it's somehow wounded, the nurturing process. And of course, this is very deep and emotional at the same time. And up in the sky, I noticed that she has Pluto squaring her Venus right now. And that's the planet of love. And you know what they, they said is that she came into the hospital screaming and crying about her lover from the 1960s, uh, Bobby Darren, I believe. Yeah. And uh, he died suddenly of a heart problem. And I thought, isn't that interesting? As Pluto is aspecting, causing a square to her Venus, which is her love connection, and also her north node, which has been, you know, her south node sits with her Venus, and that means she was heavily connected to, in the past to her lovers, right? And then she has this horrible yearning desire to, to be with Bobby suddenly. Maybe she's drinking herself to death so that she can be closer to Bobby. Who knows? But there's a, di a dynamic there that should be explored in terms of her ability to heal herself. I'll be talking a lot about healing over the next month as well. I have a lot to talk about. Oh, my. Um, for example, um, there are uh, planetary times that are best to heal yourself, and there's somebody in the back of this pile that's going through one right now. Okay, so talking about Sandra G. D. drinking herself to death, I wanted to talk about Alcoholics Anonymous for a minute. <laughs> oh my, I just found their horoscope. And um, they have a Libra rising. This is for the organization, of course. Libra rising, that, that means Venus rules. The Venus is on the world's axis at one degree of Cancer and it's in the sign of, of cancer, which is very nurturing. I thought it was also interesting that Pluto's on the midheaven. This shows a strong ambition to get towards our goals. You know, we, we don't pull out any stops. We really are passionate about meeting our goals that way. Um, the sun is in the house of transformation, and it's in the sign of Taurus. Mercury, what they think about is transformation, and it sits with Chiron, is, which is a planetoid that is associated with pain. Chiron is also known as the wound. So when Mercury and Chiron sit together, we may talk about our wound or our suffering or our pain. And it, as I said, it's in the house of transformation and the eighth house. Also, what's interesting here is we work together. Mars in the 12th house. We work, Mars, together, Libra, in the 12th house. 
and, and it's in the house of suffering and secrets. And so AA is known for its um, anonymity, and uh, it's anonymous, and so people don't have to know exactly the kind of work we're doing together is one thing you could say. Look at this. The Moon and Neptune sit together too. And it's also in the house of the future, what we aspire to. And this Neptune here is a very spiritual indicator. It, it rules things that are mystical, spiritual, religious. So for the Moon, it's like a desire here for, for God. And it's, it's right there in the 11th house of what we're really looking for. Interesting. Uh, I just thought it was a really interesting horoscope. Um, maybe we'll come back to it sometime, but I thought you might want to see it. They also have the North Node right up on the Midheaven in Pluto. Mmm, powerful. And it's interesting to note too that Saturn is in the fifth house. The fifth house is usually the sign of pleasure, but when Saturn's there maybe it means we have discipline in the amount of pleasure or the kind of pleasure we're going to partake in. Very interesting. Okay, let's go back to the National Enquirer for a minute. Uh, here's somebody who needs to go to AA apparently. Uh, he's actually a self-professed alcoholic and it's Michael Moriarty. I think I said his name right? M Michael Moriarty. Yeah. Anyway, um, you may have remembered him from Law and Order. He claims he got beaten up and during one of his drunken sprees. Ay, how embarrassing to put these pictures in the National Enquirer. And um, here he is. He's kind of a proud of his uh, rebel rousing, by the way. He's an Aries, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry. But his son sits with uh, Venus and it shows that he's artistic. Yes, he is. He's probably very loving. And we know he plays great piano as well. Um, the reason why I think that he's fallen into the realm of, of drinking so heavily is again, we see he has the same moon Pluto problem that Sandra D had. This is the moon in Cancer. How do I nurture myself with Pluto? And Chiron sits between. You're going to see a lot of these configurations behind uh, this chart, actually. Uh, there are many more. But uh, when you have that moon Pluto conjunction, especially when Chiron there, is there, it means that you're kind of wounding yourself by the way that you're nurturing yourself. So it must be turned around. It must be reversed. And there are, as I said, there are uh, auspicious ceremonies you can do. There are planetary passage, passages that you go through that are absolutely best for you to turn your life around and, and move clear away from all of that. So there'll be times for him too coming up. One of them is when Neptune starts to come up and trine his son later on in about two years time. Dennis Leary, well here's another Moon Pluto guy, you know, I wondered sometime, you know, Dennis Leary is a Leo with Pluto right next to his son and Mars there. So he is extremely volatile and he does it so great in his comedy. I heard he's a wonderful person, but look at that Moon of his is in Taurus and the Sun is in Leo. Mick Jagger and Bill Clinton have the same signature by the way. And it causes a lot of being wild, I think, is basically how you want to say it. Now, Dennis Leary, I don't know about his habits so much, but I know that he smokes a lot of cigarettes. And um, he, too, may have to learn about, about nurturing himself. All right. Charlie Sheen is somebody who is reputed to be a really good soul. He's been able to turn his life around. And what a great example of how somebody can actually do this. And you're going to see by looking at his chart, too, that he actually has a moon Pluto as well. So Charlie Sheen was born September 3rd, 1965. He's got a Gemini rising. That means the ruler of his chart is Mercury, and it's in his fall in uh, the house, in the fourth house. It's in the house of the, the getting down to the bottom of things, by the way. <laughs> but it is also the house of show business. And uh, he has a Sun Uranus Pluto conjunction. Now that kind of energy is hard to harness anyway because uh, it makes you extremely strong. Uh, a little bit too strong. Your charisma is bigger than most people. And um, I think that a lot of people who do drink try to bring themselves down a little bit to the level of other people. So, you know, you're going to see somebody who can drink powerfully and party powerfully has a very strong horoscope or constitution, by the way. This moon here in Sagittarius is um, about getting a spiritual understanding about life and it is square to the Pluto. A little bit loose, but still, I think, enough an orb to make this uh, an issue. And also he has the Sun Uranus Pluto and it's opposed to Saturn. Uh, the Saturn's retrograde, so it means run-ins with the law, with the authority people, and that he feels um, like he wants to bust out from time to time. And now he's busting out. 
he has Neptune coming over the midheaven. And I think this is why he's become a lot more spiritual. And in fact, he's even getting married this year. So congratulations, Charlie Sheen. One of the lucky ones, able to turn their life around. Whitney Houston, I've been worried about her um, lately. Uh, we've seen articles about her. We've heard stories about her. I want to tell you something about Whitney. She's a sun in Leo with a Venus in Leo. Very gifted, very beautiful, right? And it's in the sixth house of health and work. But the sun is opposing <coughs> Saturn. And <coughs> I think this combination is very, going to be hard for her to deal with. And don't forget that the wound shows up very close to the ascendant. So she may have come in with some kind of past life wound is what I'm thinking. And she also has Neptune squaring her sun. And actually at the apex of this Sun-Saturn opposition, it's called a T-square. Neptune's in the 8th house. It's the ruler of her horoscope, Neptune in the 8th house. These people often flirt with death. They like to push it all the way to the edge. Uh, some athletes do it uh, through sports. Uh, other people uh, like to climb uh, high mountains or jump out of planes and some people might like to do drugs especially if Neptune's involved in a square formation and in fact one of the things I was worried about with her is that now she's got Neptune coming up to oppose her Venus okay which is the ruler of the eighth house and if she doesn't turn this around she's going to possibly end up having her demise result from drugs because Neptune's in the house of death, okay? So here's the deal. Pluto's coming up to tr trine her sun, and then it's going to come up over the midheaven as well. This is her big chance to get it right. So Whitney's friends, if you're listening, tell her. <laughs> She's got a really good opportunity to turn her life all the way around and avoid uh, playing it out the other way, which I'm, I'm just saying I don't think she's got too many more chances left is what I'm trying to say. 